What's going on today, guys? So this video, it's a video I've been wanting to do for a little while. Uh, I need to do some maintenance and some upgrades to the old CL200. Well, because I've been a little rough on it, as you can see. I need to I bought another front drum for it as my speedometer quit working within the first five or six hundred miles of me actually getting this thing back on the road which was nice because then I knew it was past the break-in period but it's also I do this is street legal I ride it on the road and it kind of stinks because I just I know about what speed I'm going but I don't actually know what speed I'm going and I've, it's kind of nice to know how fast you're going uh, on when you're on a blacktop so, I need to do that. Uh, I burnt the clutch up during the race. Um, may insert some video here of that, if I have it. Um, I also, while I'm in there, I need to figure out why this kickstart is intermittent. It uh, sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. So I want to take a look at all that and figure out if I need to get something. Because that was another issue I had during the race. I, my battery was too low to uh, use the electric start. And uh, the kickstart would just swing through. It wouldn't actually spin out and kick. While I'm at that as well, uh, that'll probably be stage one, which is what this video will cover. 
Um, at some point, I'm going to pull the exhaust off as it has got cracks in it, uh, and I need to re-weld it. And I may even just re... I may... Because I don't really have a muffler, I have a, a husk of a shell here. Uh, and I may... I think I can form this, and I probably will, uh, just to quiet it down just a little bit. Just a little bit. Not much, just a little. It'd be nice that it's not bellowing back here and more of back here. Um, what else do I need to do this bike? Well, there's a little bit here and there, I guess. I'd like to tune it, uh, the engine. I need to clean this air filter. Uh, you can't get to this air filter unless you pull the exhaust. So, and this is a um, aftermarket one. I put uh, some unifoam in there, so I need to fix that. And I'd like to dial in the carburetors. I finally got them jetted correctly. It took me a long time to get that squared away. Uh, I don't remember what jet's in there. Uh, but they're like two or three size bigger than what I should be what stock was running because of the free flowing of the air um, And I'm hoping that between that and that I can get the bike to perform a little bit better and not so doggy So without ado, let me go get the parts for the front end and we'll see if we can put a new hub on and see if that rules it out well, the reason I'm going this far to replace this, and some people would say, well, why don't you just get a new cable? So what I've done so far to this poor bike is I have replaced the cable twice, trying to get the speedo to work. I have disassembled the speedometer gauge and completed, cleaned it all, oiled it, put it back together, still with no luck. I have lubed the internals, so I'm not quite sure what all is actually going on because... To be honest, I, it should work. It just, one day I was riding and it bobbed a couple times and then whoosh, that was it. So I bought another backing plate, which uh, is pretty low miles. My bike has 15,000 miles recorded. Uh, and <laughs> surprisingly, it still has its original Honda. I guess you can't really see it probably through the plastic, but it has Honda brakes on it still. Uh, when I rebuilt this bike, I can't, at the time, I can't remember. There was only one set of brakes that I could get. I can't remember if it was the rear or the front. But only one set of brakes got replaced on this bike. So, I'm not sure if these are any better or worse than what I have. But we'll give it a go here. And this all looks really greased nicely in here. Nice, that's some old grease too. Uh, does that spin okay? Oh yeah, it spins. Yeah, that is that's old grease. All right, I'm gonna set that over here. I think these are factory plates, factory brakes. I'm pretty sure they are. They don't look too bad. They still got some wear on them, some meat. Seems to actuate okay. So. Let's, looks to be about right. This one looks a little bit more polished than what I have. It looks pretty close. Even got the little screw, that little fell. So I tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start pulling this apart and uh, this bolt does look different. No, it's the same. This is a nice looking plate. This is a lot better than what I think I have at, right now. Anyways, we'll get started here disassembling this. <laughs> Trying to. I have no idea what cotter pins I used. This was, when I put this together, it was on a budget. It was, whatever parts I needed, I had to save up for. I was working a, I, I was working a full-time job at that time. This was just barely past college. Um, like I had just graduated. This poor bike. The scene has been with me for quite a while. Oh, that was not tight at all. <laughs> wow. Okay. I don't know if that's good or bad, but there it is. Let's write out of this all these cables. Whatever 
assembled this, didn't think they would have disassemble it. That's why I've actually had this backing plate off a couple times now, I think. I know I have, to be honest, because I've re-greased everything in here, trying to get that speedometer to work. Okay, that's done. Make sure I keep those two separate. I don't want to get my car pins confused here. Okay, I'm going to have to back that off. And now you can tell I bought some of these cables were uh, meant to copy the factory original silver cables because CL200s had silver cables and I think it was cheaper just to buy a black speedometer cable which I'm not too concerned about because no one ever really looks at this bike that much. remember how this all goes together okay push this up pull that out I think I have to take that off all the way last last time I did this I um, took the bike out and I forgot I had adjusted the brakes and uh, they were a little tight so it really dipped that front end kind of gave me gave me a little bit of a spook needless to say I haven't debated if this doesn't work, if I'm going to put this all back together or not. That is a uh, bridge I have not crossed yet. Oh, I think that's a good Let me get a ratchet. Let's do 10 or 12. Let's see here. It is 12. Maybe it's 13. See how loose it is. Yep, that's 12. Kind of dangerous. I probably should have put that lock on there. I think I was planning to take it back off. I need to give this bike a bath. Okay, front's done. Move this up out of the way, and we'll pull the wheel. Let's see if I can tap that out. I'll re-grease it when I put it back together. There's a spacer, and the spacer is on the left-hand side, if you're curious. kind of shoves into the hub you can see it here where it shoves into the hub all right let's pull this backing plate off real quick I don't know if you guys can even see that yeah, you can all right so I'll pull this off these brake pads aren't too bad these are original you can see I've re-greased it all with red grease so what I'm missing out of this hub maybe actually the piece that's giving me trouble I guess I probably should have bought a new one of these Speedo gears. Okay. It just locks into those ears, which it looks like it's. I found my problem already. It's not this. The problem is, you can see it's been rubbing. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. I got the other hub in the way. So, what tipped me off to that is when I was looking at this Speedo gear right here, you can see the bright metal. Where it's not greased. You can see it down there as well. 
Now the issue is I can see it rubbing right there. It should be locked in there, but it's not. It's rubbing. Now the real question is why is it rubbing? Is it because these are bent in? Do those tabs need to be bent out? I'm not sure. But at this point, and it could be though that this is wore so much as well that it is sunk in itself. And it's not holding it out far enough. I kind of wish I would have put gloves on. But you could see it should sit like this. But what it's actually doing is sitting like this. So, I don't know how I'm going to shim this. I don't have any copper washers big enough to drop in there. Looks like I'll be looking for a new one of these, at least temporarily. I'll put this all back together, I guess. And, uh, I'm going to clean it up. And I'll look for new Speedo gear here. And then, uh, we'll have to try this all again. Because I, this is my problem, I can tell already. I wonder if I can bend these tabs out. I might try that and see what happens. I'll clean this up before I re put it all back together. And, uh, see if we can re-grease it. And uh, bend these tabs out a little bit. See if that might help. Stay tuned. So I sat in the vise thinking I could bend it a little bit, but the gear is actually too tall. So I'm going to get a a, a buck and uh, probably just put a piece of angle iron in here to raise it up, and then try to see if I can hold it flush to just peak that and see if that'll help. So what I ended up doing was just flipping it over and using this to help bend those tabs farther down. Uh, hopefully that'll give me enough spacing that it catches that gear now and uh, holds it. We're about ready to see, I guess, so. Okay, so I don't know what I did there, but it seems to be focused in right here. Anyway, so what I did, uh, I think bending that out is going to be okay. Now that could cause stress and cause it to break. But I think I'm just going to go ahead and start looking for another one, just in case. Um, and I'll keep it with this other backing plate. Especially since now I know I'm pretty positive these were not the brakes I changed out. Uh, with that being said, um, go ahead and turn this guy up here. I'm not worried about bending it out too far, because as I tighten up the, the axle nut here momentarily, it will squish it to where it needs to be. And I think what may have happened was I put it together um, goofy at some point in time, or someone. I'm assuming it's my fault. Um, and what happened was it bent it in, but as it ran, it slipped just enough that over time it finally just gave out. I got grease. I got to get a rag here too. Um, so I'm thinking that's what happened. I don't... Uh, I'm chalk it up to me being inexperienced when I first put this together and not paying attention. Got a little screwdriver here to stick in here to hold the axle. So I think that's what was going on. Um, so I'm not super, super worried about it. I did grease up the axle before I put it together. Give it a little snug. That's a little tight. Off, just I can't back it off anymore because I'm at a hole. Let's see. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna brake clean this so I can see everything. Okay, now it smells like brake clean in here, so I can get high as shit. Excuse my French. That's pretty snug. That also happens to line up pretty good with that. So I'll pop this guy in here. This one seems very long. I don't know what I was thinking. I've As I've gotten older and possibly smarter, maybe a little bit more experienced at working with these bikes, I have tried buying the right size cotter pins for this stuff. That way, I always have... And I'll McMaster it just so I have enough for when I inevitably screw something up and have to go back and fix it or one breaks. That one's in there pretty good. Wheel spins pretty good. 
So, something to do when you do get to the point where you can afford to buy it, because you never know, um, you may need it again. Just recently, I bought, I think it was 100 cotter pins for uh, GM, GM axles, the spindles, nuts. I don't, I mean, GM used that for years. I don't know how many years, but they used it for a very long time. Long enough that I felt that if I buy a box of 100 of them, I'll start replacing them as I go instead of just reusing them all the time. Uh, that was a younger me, a not as wealthy. I'm not saying I'm wealthy at all. I'm just saying at this point I have learned my mistakes on. Let's see if I get this one lined up here. I think that's pretty close. I've learned that it's smart to get stuff in advance. Not necessarily prepping, but... supposed to go in there I'm smart enough now to purchase stuff in bulk if I can afford to purchase it in bulk and think I'm going to need it again I will do it that's what I'm trying to get at uh, that was a long-winded um, talk about that for some reason I don't know why paying attention to what I'm doing is what I should be doing okay I'm gonna break clean this this threads up okay Looks like it's a little war right there for some reason. Interesting. I'm not going to clamp this again. Hopefully it won't come off. I doubt it will. It didn't last time. It's snug. Uh, I'm going to break clean this real quick. And then I'll have to get the actual size wrenches, which I believe that is a 10 or a 12, and that's probably a 15 or 14. Uh, get it all over my expensive tires that are shin -toes. They, I will say these tires have held up pretty good. Um, I have, I want to say at least a thousand miles on these in the last, I think, I think I bought these tires, um, I had this bike running when I was laid off from my first job at a restoration shop in, um, that would have been 2015. So I've had these tires on this bike. I was wrong, it's a 16. Had these tires on this bike since then. So, um, it's 2020, is it 2023 now? It is. So that's at least five, six, seven years. That's pretty good. It's not a lot of miles for this bike. I used to ride this bike a lot, um, especially after I got laid off. Well, I've been laid off from two different jobs. One, the plant closed. The second one, the restoration shop. It was not doing very good. Um, that business is no longer open. It closed shortly after I was let to go. They were actually paying a gentleman under the table, I believe. Uh replaced me because you know paying someone under the table is a lot easier to do and cheaper for you to do than um, paying your employee oh, okay this is kind of a pain so I learned a lot from that business though that was a good learning experience I was right out of college and uh, at the time I was working on this bike Quite a bit. I actually had a <laughs> every two weeks I had a budget of two hundred dollars that I could I limited myself to spending on this and I was not making much money. I wasn't making much more than that. I was actually it was fun. I mean I learned a lot. It was not always fun I should say. It was some days it was pretty miserable working there. Um I'd actually started applying for jobs. They had uh, underbid a bunch of projects and then uh, things weren't getting done because they only had one employee and that was me. And 
one man can only work on so many vehicles at a time. Wow. The guy running the shop spent a lot more time focusing on his YouTube videos and uh, watching YouTube. So when you got two employees of the shop, one being the shop manager and the other just a regular employee, you can't expect to do four or five cars at the same time. That's my little rant. Uh, I mean, I, the big takeaway is I learned a lot. Um, that's for my personal use at that point then. All right. Front tire done. Let's see. Looks to be running fairly true. So let's go ahead and go to the clutch. 